Hey, Eric. Hey. How are you? Mic, mic check. Is it good? Yeah, it's good. Oh, good. Excellent. Welcome, everybody, in the stream. Prepping steps right now. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, I gotta change the laundry over. Huh. Adulting! Woo! <laughs> Lots to do. I'm gonna read a message in Discord right now while the music's going. It's probably hard to hear my voice. It's so interesting. We got a we got a guy in the chat who's like, man, I love playing the game, but every live stream hits me with new information or toys that's not coming until later. It's killing my wanting to play the current build. Ah! Ah! What a terrible, beautiful problem to have. You know what I'm saying? What a terrible, beautiful problem. Ah. But soon, guys! This fall update, I mean, it is the fall. It is the fall. We gotta be in close, right? Probably. <clears throat> All right. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, to the official Rockfish Games stream, where I am your host and your guide and your servant, Eric Schrader, the community ambassador for Rockfish Games. I will be guiding you on a tour through Everspace 2 and what's latest and new in our endeavors. We're going to be having a couple of different chat opportunities today. Uh, so the first bit, we're going to be kind of talking a little bit about early access as I do show uh, the updated updated Sentinel special. Um, kind of just like giving you guys a little recap as to where we're at, kind of what we're working on that I can at least tell you about. Um, and you know, so if any of you guys don't know what that looks like, I'm just gonna give you a little bit of that insight. Then we're also going to be going over even more changes to, I shouldn't say changes, improvements really, to racing. We're getting in a finalization phase of the racing minigame stuff. So uh, yeah, that's that's looking and feeling really good. I'll let you guys uh, determine that for yourself though. And then we're also going to be uh, talking and giving a bit of praise about your guys' feedback that we've been receiving. In fact, I'm gonna do like this impromptu thing where I'm just gonna straight up open the Steam forums. This sounds terrible. It sounds like a terrible idea, but I'm like, I'm gonna open the Steam forums and just like cruise through it and I'm gonna like show you just how well received you guys have been. It's gonna be hopefully uh, a kind of an interesting but fun sort of uh, part of the stream. And then last but certainly not least, we're gonna be highlighting screenshots and covering Michael Selects today as well. So a lot in store, 
It should be a pretty fun, wild run. A lot of you guys, you hardcore guys coming back for more. I love it. Thank you for being here. If you got those burning questions, uh, just post them into the chat. Uh, Geekbyte is here with me. He will be grabbing all those questions and at specific intervals in the stream, I'll be covering that whole gambit. Okay, so who's ready to see the new, new Sentinel? I know I sure am, goodness. So <clears throat> I'm gonna go to the ship dealer and I've got a Sentinel right here. The special is still called Induction. We didn't change the name. But I'll just, I'm just going to show it like this and then read it off. Primary weapons have their fire rate increased up to 20% depending on current shield charge percentage. There it is. Some of you might be thinking, well, that that's not that big of a change. I mean, before it was like a shield charge percentage thing. Yes. However, this is a pretty significant change, honestly. Um, so I want to tell you why that is and how this works in conjunction with the Sentinel. Cause I'm sure a lot of you people out there are probably looking at that saying like, you know, 20% is less than 40%. What gives? Well, um, 20% increasing any sort of weapon that's in your, uh, like in your kit, uh, that's going to definitely increase over 40% damage provided you've got the energy capacity for it. So long as you're maintaining that balance and you're also maintaining your shield, uh, it's going to be a, just a far better improvement, honestly, as well as the fact that it's no longer going to be conflicting with excessive force uh, because we've already got this tool that allows you to increase your energy damage while your shield is fully charged. Uh, really in short is we wanted the Sentinel's ability to be unique instead of just a copy pasta of excessive force. I mean, <laughs> so, um, you know, it, it's fun. Game dev is fun. It's incredibly challenging at times. You rack your brain around certain things. You feel like you get this new exclusive idea. You plug it in. You're like, yeah. Then you look at some other things you did and you're like, I already did that. You know, it's, it's great. It's fantastic. But this is to further distinguish the Sentinel. Of course, let's check out the passives really quick. Um, just to highlight why this can be significant. And we actually have good ones to, to show that. So I'm blocking the way. Um, each kill reduces random device by one and 20% reduce cooldowns for warfare devices. Both of these in conjunction with being able to fire faster, uh, I feel like is just a massive benefit as a whole. You're not really seeing faster fire rates in combination with device benefits so much on other ships. I know somebody's gonna be like, um, that's entirely the freaking stinger hello, it shoots faster and it's like a device master. Yes, okay. Uh, but in the medium category where you also have actual health to take a shot or more uh, versus the stinger and then this insane shield boon that the Sentinel has, you can start seeing the synergies already with having those proc effects based on your ability to get those uh, shots out of your weapon. So the fire rate, Definitely kind of a, an altercation to the ship. Wasn't something that we necessarily had planned, but it does fit the build, fits the bill really well, in fact. And I think you guys will uh, enjoy that and making it just a tad more distinct and also making it frankly stand out just a tad more from other counterparts like the Striker and the Interceptor in the medium class, because you can see the difference in how it's firing as opposed to just like, knowing there's a benefit there, but not really like fully seeing it. Does that make, the, you know what I'm saying? Benefits that you get that you know are happening, you, you kind of forget about, but like you can actively see how this changes the ship, right? So that's, that's what I mean by that. So we're gonna go ahead and buy and sell current. We're gonna buy this Thunderbolt also because it's just a sexy looking ship. All right. And we're also going to pick up right where we left off otherwise. Uh, we were in Drake. We were doing some things. And uh, I also had this build uh, sent to me just a moment ago, honestly. I had it downloaded right beforehand. I did a smoke test. Hopefully nothing crashes. But just as a constant reminder to anybody new, these dev streams are super, like, bleeding edge stuff that you're seeing and what we're doing. So... Accidents may happen, and if I accidentally show something you're not supposed to see yet, um, Michael, I'm sorry, but also we do try and, you know, cultivate these streams to highlight upcoming improvements, uh, balance issues, all that stuff. 
much like how uh, early access generally works, you know, in a nutshell. <clears throat> So yeah, perhaps I see a little, just a comment. It's not really a question, but like I see a, perhaps we can get a tiny little sneaky peeky about some in-game ideas. Uh, nope, not quite ready to crack that open yet. Not quite ready. I love your guys' desire to do that, um, but that is a really good segue into like where we're currently at with early access, what the plan of attack is right now. Like what are the priorities? and what is, you know, more or less what's to come without, you know, spoiling everything. So as many of you guys know, early access is a massive step of balancing and uh, community reception. Of course it is, duh, everybody knows this. It's also where we are soaking in feedback to adjust and maintain the systems according to our vision. I want to be clear on that front. When I say our, I'm talking about Rockfish. The conception of Everspace 2 has a very bold vision in place, and we design everything around that. That's not to say your guys' feedback can't modify, adjust, or even add more features or systems or anything like that. But just note that Let's primarily, we already have that overarching game plan of how everything's mostly gonna come together. This refinement system of early access and working in tandem with you guys gives us an absolute edge over, I mean, goodness, so many outstanding situations me, where on the fly, we can figure out very quickly if what we thought was working isn't, what we thought was fun isn't, what uh, is missing, what needs to be reprioritized, you know, all that type of stuff. And I know a lot of you guys have seen it already and how it all comes together. So uh, yeah, early access, what a wild ride it's been. And there's so much more coming, which brings me to the next bit. What the heck is coming? What's on, what's on the horizon? Like what's currently what's currently being worked on versus what's out there? And this is another fantastic question that we kind of don't really get. I think it should be asked more, and I'm absolutely wanting you guys in on this, so that the expectations surrounding development are stabilized. It's much better for you guys when you know what's around the corner. It's much better for us whenever you know how things are supposed to be working. And uh, yeah, so right now, the fall update is of course the priority, right? It is top of the list. And this is also why in a lot of these streams, I haven't been able to show you like the new, new content, right? Like I can't zoom out here and be like, oh, hey, you wanna see the next system that we're working on? Maybe, no, I can't, I can't do that, right? And maybe this is a complete, uh, maybe I'm fooling you completely. Maybe we're working on a different system over here. I, regardless, um, regardless, like we don't want to reveal those specific details of where you're going until, you know, the context surrounding all of that is in place. Uh, but yeah, do know that we still stand by wanting to get at least six systems out the door at full release, okay? And we're on track for that. So you will in fact see another system for sure, inevitably, maybe not by fall, but this is something that's already in the works right now, okay? In addition to that, we're also working on a lot of back-end systems to clean up the game space. And this isn't just a balancing act, okay? This is also a refinement based on the feedback you guys have been providing us. This is really important right here. A lot of this stems from what we want and how you're receiving it. And a lot of this, I mean, in, in layman's terms, I think a lot of people understand this is a notorious content creep, right? 
Like when a game's getting developed and then, uh, you know, everyone's like, well, yeah, but what if you did this and what if you did that? Content creep, right? For anyone not familiar with content creep, which I mean, you're gamers, you probably do, but just in case anyone who's not, content creep is very much when there are new ideas brought to the table that were not planned, but are then incorporated, which very much stretches out and extends uh, development time, costs, um, vision, you know, all of these different things. And in some cases, it can be a fantastic problem to have. We're going to call it that. And other times, it can be Star Citizen. Ah, <laughs> oh, I wasn't necessary, Eric. Come on, guys. You love it. It's fine. We enjoy Star Citizen. It's a, it's a, it was low hanging fruit. I apologize, but also you're welcome. All right. Um, but sincerely, like this is something that it happens. It happens in game dev, whether you like it or not. And um, I can, I can honestly say that through our development process, through bringing everything together, like through all of the processes, even with like the crazy stuff in the world going on, you know, how I ever, you know, 2020, what a, what a year, right? Um, like even with all of that being said, we have always stayed the course on ensuring that the overarching vision that we desire will be met. We are ensuring that all of the promises that are on Kickstarter will be met. And we're ensuring that the community reception, whether it's, you know, from creative backers or from really outstanding uh, champions on the forums or in Discord or on Reddit or wherever you're talking from, like we're recognizing that in some way, shape or form, degree, capacity, whatever. Like these are what's important to us. It's, it's integral, in fact, to this process, as well as the fact is, you know, being transparent. Because if we can't talk to you about this and you don't know about it, like you're kind of in the dark and that can suck. You don't know if how, like where your money's going. And especially since we are, you know, we were Kickstarter backed. I think it's incredibly important for us to help you see and help you understand the direction that we're taking and why. So, um, yeah. Development has been really good. A lot of the focus has been turning to the end game. You know, it's that's looking at uh, level 30. That's looking at the ancient rifts. Okay, that is something that we have started to prioritize. It's uh, it's a process, you know, but it's an incredibly important aspect of the game as a whole, right? We don't want you to get to level 30 and then twiddle your thumbs because there's nothing to do. That would basically be the worst thing ever, honestly. Like, what's the point of building yourself up and finding all these unique builds and special powers and clever, you know, whatevers, and then you're simply left with not being able to, to do anything with it. You're not being able to showcase it. You're not being able to, you know, whatever that is. That would suck. And we wanna take really great care in ensuring that it doesn't suck. <laughs> So yeah, that's been the priority and also why I can't show that stuff yet. Because we are literally developing it right now. And it is not a light process to go through at all. I mean, shoot, we could, we could reference a number of games that have leveling progression systems and then they have in-game content. And like, shoot, there's so many games that when they released, there was this initial idea from the developers. And then <laughs> six months later, a year later, five years later, there's entirely new in-game content that comes out that's completely different because it needs to satisfy the desires of the community in order for it to, you know, make sense and last and stuff like that. And, you know, we are absolute gamers at Rockfish, and there are so many games that we have been taking inspiration from. Everything from uh, the Diablo franchise to Freelancer to Destiny to uh, freaking oh my gosh, uh, there's so, there's so much. Like I could just 
I just list off games almost infinitely, and you'd be all like, oh yeah, I can kind of. It's 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 insane. It's it's kind of insane. But I promise it's for good reason. I promise it's for very good reason. Uh, you know, at first I kind of thought it was broken that you could still shoot when you're frozen, but that was incredibly convenient and I want that to stay. <laughs> All right, job completed, feels good. So yeah, there's a, a a decent like chunk as to like kind of what we're working on and why, like especially why we can't like show it quite yet. Um, Cause it, it really much, it's, it's so in the works right now. And we do have these overarching plans that we will tell you more about when we get closer to that fall update, right? Um, it's just that we'd be revealing it too early if you like if we put everything down on paper and was like this is what it's exactly going to be. But please note, very 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 important for us to get the end game right. That is priority number 1 right now. Like it's it's the top of the list. Everything that we're working on on that front is like this is where we're going, this is what we're talking about. It whether it's like story conclusions or, or character interactions, whether it's gameplay systems and mechanics, predominantly that's what it's about. Uh, the enjoyment factor, the reward systems, like all of that stuff, all of that stuff is number one right now, okay? So if you're wondering like, where are my new ship wings? And why haven't you revamped this, uh, I, I don't know, insert thing somebody's complaining about probably. Like, it's because, the focal point is boom. It's like on the big stuff right now. And, you know, we still have a couple little tweaks and, and updates here and there to like flesh out other details because with the end game, you have to have everything else working in tandem in order for it to be, you know, successful, right? Which is why we've seen a revisit to the Sentinel twice in uh, a week, <laughs> right? Um, and, you know, everything coming together needs to be more or less in a finished state at this point. Now, what's to come? I just spent all this time saying like, man, we're, we're not really focusing on the little details right now. We're like focused on this end game stuff and you can't see it yet. Sorry, see you later. <laughs> like, <laughs> but what's to come? Guys, we still have more content that's coming to this game, right? There's still more content. As mentioned before, like we still have more aesthetic options to these ships that'll be in the works, that we're bringing to the table. There's, I don't know, since it's a, since it's a looter shooter, I can only imagine there's probably going to be more variety and equipment and modules and stuff like that. I mean, Shoot, if anybody's paying attention whatsoever and looking at, you know, the Kickstarter or just general conversations we've had, legendaries aren't in the game yet, right? So we know that at the very least, we're gonna see a slew of equipment on that front. And through that, which is probably going to be introducing their own sort of uniquenesses in some degree or capacity, that might start triggering entirely new concepts and builds for what's to come further, right? It's so, it's, and you know, <laughs> there's a gap here, right? There's a gap here for Adam. You know, we've added so many more perks for characters along the way. Maybe there's even more characters. Obviously, because you know it from the Kickstarter and we've talked about it in the past. Like, and I mean, the coming soon on this page is just, it's obnoxious, <laughs> right? Goodness. So when I say like, there's a lot more to come, um, I like, I tell you this for two reasons. One, because man, we've had such an influx of folks, um, like kind of going to that sort of proverbial, that's it sort of <laughs> mentality. 
And uh, no, <laughs> um, just just no. Like it's an early access process. Like this happens with any game that's an early access. It goes in steps. And for us, oh man, I just I love that warping. And for us, it's very much. It's very much a process of focusing on the most important aspects of what's needed for the game, right? That's how we work at Rockfish. And it's not a matter of let's try to do 50 things at once because that doesn't get anything done. And we're really, really happy thus far with these results and how they've reached fruition for you guys based on your feedback alone, frankly, but also, uh, seeing your guys thoughts and ideas and suggestions and like there are so many times i get to look at what you guys suggest and i'm just like nodding like man i wish i could tell them <sighs> in a good way oh man mm. so there's a lot there's a lot and there's there's seriously like if you're looking at especially like the amount of time and dedication that we're putting into the development specifically, there's still a pretty healthy amount more to come. Now, I'm not saying we're going to freaking double the game size and all the content. Goodness, I, let's temper our expectations there. But uh, anyone who's ever played a looter shooter at all or any game that has, uh, you know, randomized equipment knows that you add one more into a pool of like even 10, that magnifies everything. And, you know, there's going to be some more magnification. There's going to be, there's going to be a healthy bit more. So, uh, I hope you're ready. Woo! So that was a lot. Probably a lot to soak in. I hope that clarifies to a couple of people the early access process and where we're at and what we're doing and why we're doing it and kind of what's to come. Now I'm sure that there have been plenty of questions that were asked. And uh, Geekbyte, if you are there, I think I'm ready to start answering probably a, a large number. Oh, we've had a few. We've had a few. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So, guys, this is going to be a segment where Geekbyte's asking those questions that you have been supplying. And we're just going to we're gonna answer them straight up. So, have at you. Right. First off, is actually a uh, kind of one that came up last week uh, in regards a challenge that you possibly were going to do uh, with the bomber in one of the racing inertia uh, dampeners off. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Man. Uh, uh, Bearded Frog actually asked this again just to make sure it kind of got put oh, to you. Uh, he wants to up the ante just a little we're, bit as well. And if you're feeling brave, uh, inverted this... flight control. <laughs> <laughs> goodness great we're having such a beautiful discussion about early access and the process of development and you're like yeah okay that's great and all but can you do this crazy thing you yeah. guys are nuts i love it we'll try it once yeah. once <laughs> maybe uh, maybe a couple be, times probably but be happy with oh that he'll be happy you guys are ridiculous <laughs> now um <laughs> next question <laughs> Next one uh, came from Slorine over on YouTube. Um, will we get the September recap soon after the August recap? You know, like we got the August recap oh my soon gosh. after the July one. Yeah, you know, that, that's a great it's question. Cutting. So, uh, you know, gonna gonna be a hundred percent honest on that front. I've had to uh, juggle a number of priorities because actually, kind of ties into our whole early access thing. There have been so many other things that are so much more important than giving those who haven't watched the streams a recap. I know that they're delightful. I know that they're wonderful. And I love making them, honestly. Uh, it's just, it's not priority, guys. I'm really sorry. But something that I haven't even suggested to Michael yet, so hi, surprise, Michael, is I might just do like a combined uh, August, September recap video, like in one. Um, but we'll, we'll see, we'll see. Because I do have like all the sections and, and tidbits uh, ironed out. Like goodness, I could show you the paperwork on it. It's nuts. Just hasn't, just hasn't been edited. Hasn't been completed. So, but that will get done. I hope soon. <laughs> Woo! All right. Cool. Cool. Um, Fred Speckwet over on YouTube is asking, uh, and they're kind of fishing for, for, the, for some for me information. Ah, okay. in. That's fine. Will we finally get some new news today? Like something biggish? 
news today for something biggish. No, no, we're not gonna, we don't have any, we don't have any big news today. And if, if somebody hears that and they're just like, oh, well, I'm gone. I mean, every one of these weeks that we, you know, come here to these streams, like it's, it's not just a matter of like showing like all the big new updates and content stuff. Like every week is a little bit of a transformation to clue you in on where things are at and how things are going, right? And it's also this opportunity to answer those questions you have. So uh, while I do appreciate that question, there's just, there's no, there's nothing I can really do to probably answer that in a pleasant way, right? When we have those big announcements though, there will be very clear markers out in the wild, whether it's a tweet, whether it's a Discord post, whether it's something that shows up on the forums and the Steam feed, you know, like you're gonna know when we're gonna have something really stinking neat. Uh, the only exception to that is if I convince Michael that we should sneak it at you guys and reveal during a stream, but <laughs> but uh, yeah, that doesn't happen very often. I suppose it can, but uh, yeah, there you go. <laughs> cool, cool. This one's a bit of a, a, a slight technical question regarding uh, an ongoing bug from T3 Cube on Twitch. Okay. Uh, with the unnamed pickup bug being back and in full force, allowing players to equip anything in any slot due to glitched weapons and ship parts, will any more time be sunk into nailing this multi-year bug? Uh, there's a concern that it's eating away at any new content production because it's right. to nail down that bug. Right. So, yeah, I mean, the the big thing with that bug, and just I'll, I'll just be brief on it, is that it was very much game-breaking and how you could effectively... I mean, you're, you're effectively changing your inventory to just about whatever you want and doing things that are absolutely not supposed to be allowed. Um, and that's that's not intended, right? That's, that's not intended gameplay. Like if we had some sort of like, you know, modifier system that was like, combine these two weapons, which is not what we're going to do. I don't want you guys to even think about that. Like it's not a concept that's on the table. It's, it's not gonna happen. Just gonna be very clear on that front. We gotta set that expectation. But like, if that were in place, then it would be like, oh, it's not really as big of a deal because it's kind of using systems that were in inherently designed, but it's not. It's not, it's not intended whatsoever. It's manipulating the tools <laughs> that are meant to be experienced in a far different way. And uh, it's, a, it's a nasty bug. We consider that to be a nasty bug. Now, the way that it kind of came up more recently, though, wasn't... Uh, oh, the music's too loud. Thank you, Michael. How's that? Check one, two. Um, <clears throat> you let me know if that's better or if it needs to keep coming down. Um, but it, like, with all sincerity, and how that bug kind of uh, still too loud. All right. Um, we're going to go just a little bit further. And we're gonna try here. Yeah, uh, I did see the report on the Steam forums and the saves. Yeah, so yeah, we're good. Like you did the same thing that you are supposed to do uh, whenever you find a, a, a really nasty bug like that. It's good to send it our way so that we can correct those issues. Cause it's very much an issue that can impact the gameplay formula. You know, if somebody accidentally came across that it could really screw up their save file, right? That wouldn't be good. That wouldn't be fun. Mr. Carter's casino. And so we, we have to we have to eliminate stuff like that. So thank you for the report. It's not necessarily currently a priority, but it's definitely one that has to be out of the picture in order for all the other systems to, you know, the work the way that they're intended to work. So yay fun, right? Ah, but all right. I love, the, I love the brief answer to that. That was cool. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, super, super brief. Like, <laughs> wow. Anyway, next, <laughs> next up, uh, Finn's over on YouTube has asked: Are there any plans to add any new gameplay mechanics and/or effects, like space weather, to super light travel part of the game? I think, I think that means some things like space storms or yeah. pirates appearing, etc. Yeah, so I mean, I'm not gonna say that we're not. Um, it's also really hard to say that we are because that starts getting into territory of like revealing too much. Um, I think I think it's in, like, I could absolutely say we would love to do so much more in the space of like super light and 
uh, you know, just like those added sort of whimsical effects that you see, especially the ones that come out of Everspace 1, because it's completely randomized, so there's much more freedom there. But because these are handcrafted locations with intentional uh, space surrounding them, there's not as much flexibility to just like randomly make the star purple, for example. It's like, why did it become purple if the star is orange on the map? You know, for example, just super basic. Um, and so on that front, like we do have to be genuinely careful about how we are going about that process. And yeah, I mean, it's definitely desired. That's a nice to have that will occur after the priorities are hit. Okay. That is a nice to have. It has to be assumed that this signal is used by outlaws to lure in unknown Sweet. Uh, next up, uh, Adrian Caballero over on YouTube asks, when I see that a shop offers, uh, or see what a shop offers, it feels a bit disappointing. Uh, will the stores change, as in the vendors? Uh, I did ask for some clarification. This feel like the variety uh, in weapons can be bad, or there's few, too few weapons. Uh, they want more photos of boxes rather than just an image of the item. Yeah, I love this question. And, um... You know, this has been this has been something that we really do want to change. Um, I'm not necessarily sure I could say that it's a priority, but it's definitely something that the entire team uh, has looked at many times over. And at a certain point in time, we wanted to revamp the whole dang thing into a much more intricate and possibly dynamic sort of trading system with these intricate trade lanes and all this type of stuff. Like we were going, we were going big and and it was gonna be really super cool. Now, as development uh, proceeded and uh, directions sort of changed to put the focal point on uh, key aspects like the looter shootering, as opposed to like having some sort of like underlying simulation experience that honestly is moving away from the core vision. Like these are, these are conflicting ideas. They don't go so well in tandem, unfortunately. Like we had to, make some you know important decisions on where that focus need to lie now i say that to provide the context of you know how development has proceeded it's still something we plan on doing it's still something we would like to include and when i say when i say like something we plan on doing like a, a little bit more context not nearly as dynamic as what you're probably thinking okay uh the plan is to have certain system, uh, system, cer certain stores sell certain and very specific goods over other stores. And this simple process of distinguishing storefronts will allow there to be this essence of if I buy from here specifically because they have a bunch of it at a cheaper cost, then I can go over there where they have none of it and sell it for a much greater cost, right? Uh, very similar, honestly, to Freelancer, except instead of using trade lanes, you have Superlight, which is arguably faster. Um, and let's not even bring into the table of spatial bypass. I mean, come on. So um, to sort of rectify that situation for now and to also for balancing purposes, especially with timing situations, uh, the speed at which you can get from one place to another, like we have put a lot more work into the jobs, right? As well as unknown locations like this one I'm currently in. This is a new one that's only in our development build that just puts a, a bit more emphasis on combat related situations where you're kind of doing waves of enemies. Turns out in a combat focused game, you guys like this. So do we. I am really terrible in first person, by the way. I don't think I'm gonna survive. Let's see if we can manage. Ah, I need to block the shots. Heal. Okay. Excellent. Thanks for uh, letting me focus on this and pause the questions. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but like, we really do want to make sure that there's a healthy amount of variety and a healthy amount of focus whenever we're bringing these different systems to the table and, you know, the trading, marketing, you know, all of that style of stuff uh, that was, you know, initially planned, like we do still want to, you know, bring that to the table in some degree or capacity, but it looks a bit different. And I hope that you guys will understand why um, 
I mean, I, I'm sure you do understand because we've explained it probably like a billion times, but yeah. Focals on that looter shooter, uh, much less on the venture capitalist. <laughs> so there you go. Cool, cool. Yeah, we could tell you were concentrating. The tongue was starting to stick out a little bit. In the oh, gosh. Circuit. Yeah, I'm, I'm really, this is, uh, this is, uh, this is challenging. But yeah, uh, next question, please. <laughs> we'll, we'll, fire, we'll fire this one in for a bit if Frog again over on YouTube. Okay. Uh, is the new companion that was supposed to make it into the summer update and to make it into the fall update? Um, I actually have not received clarification on that. I mean, in a perfect world, the answer is probably yes, but I, I simply can't say it because I don't, I, I haven't heard anyone say yes. Um, I do know that the character's production has been coming along well. I've seen screenshots and, and notations and stuff like that. So I, I know that the character is, is coming. Like I, I know that they are, um, when is a, that's, that's a toss up. That's a toss up. Um, if Uva was here, he would probably be able to answer it. Uh, but shoot, Michael, if you know, it would be super cool uh, if there was any additional information on, you know, the, the new companion that was planned for the summer update, um, if it is coming in the fall, or if we had to push that back based on the tremendous number of other priorities that we're working on. If you know. And if you don't, it's okay. <laughs> Um, last question for yep. this section, and then you're good to go. Uh, again, from TE3Cube on Twitch. Um, it seems to be a, an issue with things being thrown through walls that's been around for a very, very long, long time. Is there some reason why it isn't fixed? Is it a technical problem? Oh, yeah, it's it's very technical. I mean, it's... Uh, here, let me see if I can just make a problem happen right here. Let's... Oh, no, I'm too close. Hang on. Well, shoot, I, I'm terrible at making problems suddenly. That won't last long. Nope, still too close. Um, well, basically what I was going to show is that like sometimes when you destroy resources, they can actually float backwards, right? And it's it's annoying to say the least. Let's see if that does the trick. Come on. Wasn't close enough? Wait, these missiles are too... Okay, yeah. Whatever. Anyway, you know, it's... You're going to have like little bugs like that, that plague the development process so much, it's just not a priority because it doesn't affect the game that much. Sincerely, it really doesn't. Uh, we haven't, you know, I say that and I know there's gonna be this one issue in the future and it's like, you get this legendary drop and it falls into an asteroid and you're like, damn it, Rockfish! <laughs> and that that's gonna be the super feels bad man. And, you know, we have already circumvented some of those situations actually, where when something does go through a wall, even if you like go up to the wall and you're at the right range, I think it's I think it's 180 meters or 150 meters. If you're within that range, you can suck it in even if it's through the wall. So we're using little things like that to help alleviate uh, some of those issues. But obviously in a perfect world, we would annihilate it so it could never happen. But uh, I hear hitboxes don't always play nice. So yeah. But that's a that's a great little question. I love it, um, no. and it is what it is. Uh, Michael did yeah. go ahead and follow up about the companion very briefly, um, and so this is what he has to say. He says, "Pretty sure the new companion won't be coming in the fall update since he's part of the rest of the campaign that is coming with 1.0." So I really do appreciate that clarity, Michael, and so that all of you guys are aware. Uh, and just to kind of add more clarity on what that means, uh, Everspace Two might have seemed to be uh, released in kind of like this episodic state where you're getting like part of the story, part of the story, part of the story with each update. And while that's partially true, we are developing the entirety of Everspace with each update. So if you are only playing the campaign and you've never started a game over since, uh, you missed so much content. <laughs> like it's, it's crazy how much content you have actually missed uh, based on the balance changes, adjustments, like the feeling of how you would experience the game are just wildly different. Um, and to that, 
we got to this certain part in the story. Uh, I don't want to get too spoilery because also it's not even out yet. But for those who kind of know where it concludes, like we feel like it's a really good cliffhanger, honestly, to where we can work on these core aspects of the game, solidify all of that, get the end game in a powerful state regardless of the story, right? Because we very much have a tremendous emphasis on gameplay over here at Rockfish. Um, and once all of that's solidified, once we've got all of these elements down and you are able to test them through early access, then we'll be able to give that beautiful delivery of that 1.0 release with this story, with these characters, with these conclusions that are gonna tie up loose ends and probably open a few more, you know, that, cause that's how stories work. All right. Yeah. So yeah, thank you for all of those questions. Uh, so Geekbyte's gonna go silent for a little bit. And uh, if you have more questions, by all means, go ahead and start asking them. What I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna go into uh, a little bit more about racing, where that's at, what's been done, and a little bit of what the future is. Uh, I should have probably asked Torben what I'm allowed to say, but I'm probably just gonna tell you anyway, cause it's not crazy, but you're gonna like it. I think you're gonna like it. And um, I like you guys. So, um, and also like, Note that most of what we've done to racing, actually, yeah, no, a crazy amount. And Michael can attest to this, shoot. Like, <clears throat> we've been able to like sneak in so much more work in racing than what was planned. Oh my gosh. Like it's it's kind of a night and day difference uh, based on where things were at before and uh, like the vision we had versus like where things are going to be, like what we're gonna realize. Um, even with talking with Torben, who who I, I mentioned Torben, he's one of the individuals who's been hard at work on racing, okay? And I, like even today, like uh, in providing feedback on these races and how it's all coming together and the story surrounding it and you know, all of these things, like I've just been continually impressed. I have been. Um, just everything from the little tidbits of information that you get for you high score chasers out there, your super hardcore fans of racing, you know, to um, even just having something to do outside of blowing everything up. Like, because it's, it's nice to have that. It's nice to have that. Um, also, I'm gonna change this setting, which I'm blocking actually. Um, here, hang on a second. I wanna, I wanna show this. The setting that I'm blocking, uh, I have this enabled. This is something that we added somewhat recently. Um, I don't think it's a big deal, but just letting you know it's there. Mute audio when unfocused. So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna mute it so that way I can look at some extra stuff and you hear this beautiful music as I'm going. Delightful. All right. So pulling up a couple of little things on what's planned to happen for racing and then showing you a little bit more about how things have come together. Here we go. First things first, I'm sure you all saw how when I was doing these races after they'd been revamped that you have a very strict starting position, right? You remember that? You probably all do. If you don't, well, I'm gonna show you right here. Basically, when you started these races, your ship couldn't move. Your ship couldn't move at all. We added this so you can kind of prioritize how things are lined up. And then you can get a really nice start based on how you've adjusted yourself even before the race starts. Just a small tweak that we feel makes a pretty huge improvement. Just giving the player a little bit more agency over, ah, oh, what? Well, <laughs> it happens. You know what else we added? A restart race button. You can just slap that button and you return to the front. Look at that. So if you fail well and you're like, I wanna do it again, and you're being really particular, that's a nice feature, isn't it? But uh, just to get a little bit more further clarity in this, I can start boosting before the race begins. So I don't have to time my boost right as it starts, right? Like it's going, the second the race starts, my boost will start coming down and everything else is gravy from there. Oh, this is bad. But um, yeah, like, a lot of those little fine-tunement adjustments we just feel is so important for those of you who like want to have that tactile response of, in preparation for the race, as well as the diehards that are like, 
I have this new alignment starting position with my gunship that doesn't have inertia dampeners on it because you're crazy. You're you're absolutely insane, people. But uh, yeah, I was I was rough. Whatever. So, um, yeah. So a lot of healthy changes in that. Even like the top five with the ship ranking and how many rings you've collected and the time. Like we're really happy with all of that. Still, what's to come? We are going to have map information um, pertaining to the races as well. So like when you're going to the map and you're looking at a location like Cryptus Bull here, um, it's gonna be listed. You're gonna see that there's a race that you can do and the marker for the race is gonna be identified internally as well. So like you can go to a location and not be confused where that uh, racetrack was. Just simple cleanup, like this is, it's in the plans. We don't even consider that like quality life improvement. Like this is baseline standard. It's going to happen like, right? Um, and then we also are going to have rewards for the races. It's not going to be content barring rewards. What I mean by that is it's not gonna be something where it's like, you have to complete all the races at platinum tier um, five times in order to obtain this very specific super legendary uh, thruster, you know, or something like that, right? We're not going to do that. Okay, racing as a whole, I've said this so many times, you guys know it, but it's a mini game, okay? If you love it, then love on it, do it. But we're not gonna content gate rewards through the racing system, okay? And I've even mentioned this one more time, gonna mention it anyway, with the side mission pertaining to the races, the requirement in order to beat the side mission is simply bronze. That's it. You do not have to get platinums but there might be steam achievements associated with stuff like that. Possibly is my guess. All right. The last little thing is a couple of tweaks to the times. Uh, in fact, we're not done with the times that you continue to see that I continue to show you guys, you know, even just looking at these times, like you can see the platinum is at 55 seconds. The gold's at one minute and 10 seconds. Some of you guys are gonna blow those numbers out of the water and we expect you to. Um, and other ones are going to really challenge with that. And we may even evaluate where the bronze times are to like further ease players into that. So you could miss most of the rings, complete a race, and that would be okay, right? We want that to be accessible intentionally. And yeah, there's going to be other little tweaks too, like a little bit more sound design surrounding races and, um, more yeah and that's that's all the more i can talk on that front so uh we're really 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 thrilled honestly with how racing has moved along and i hope you guys are too um because man with all sincerity what it was before this whole revamp was kind of what we were just going to stick with we were just kind of happy with it. We we're like, let people do what they want with it. It'll just be fun. It'll be great. Like people can challenge each other. And we're like, yeah, we'll clean it up a little bit more. And here we are several weeks later. <laughs> and we've spent probably a little too much time on it, but man, we love it. We, we want to take great care in it. Uh, thank goodness we got that little added time to, to really bring it together. And uh, we hope that you're gonna enjoy that aspect of it. Whether you like the racing or not, I think it comes together so much better. I hope you guys agree. All right. Okay. Ooh. I'm getting warm. So I made the design. No, no, no. I did not make the designs for, for racing whatsoever. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. Hasn't been, hasn't been on my plate. Nope. Uh, credit goes to a number of folks at Rockfish, actually. There's been several people uh, working on racing. Um, I'm not sure who the designs would be. Maybe, uh, actually it might be Torben himself. But uh, he's he's been pouring out so much time into it. And there's been like the technical elements that surround racing have also been done by a number of individuals on the team too. Um, it's a, it's a, it's literally a team effort uh, when it comes to this type of stuff. So, yeah, very, very good.
And I guess it probably shouldn't come as a surprise to you guys, but uh, I also want to mention that, you know, with looking at this particular side mission and just cleaning it up a bit, you know, we are evaluating other opportunities with side missions, I guess you could say. Um, and we are, we want to expand those even further. And, you know, as just kind of like a direct sort of obvious thing to say, like this is like the job opportunities, right? This is the unknown signals. This is the, 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 um, the uh, uh, distress calls. You know, this is gonna be the location challenges. Like we, we wanna make them just a tad more interesting. We wanna give them a little bit more polish so they feel good, they feel right uh, when you're bringing it all together. Uh, it's, it's important, right? It's important. All right, so I'm gonna cheat here. And I'm gonna teleport to a different race uh, because you guys are crazy and want me to race in a freaking, I'm gonna do this just, it's gonna be a small part of the stream. I say that we're gonna, we're gonna do this until freaking <laughs> screenshots. <laughs> but uh, we're gonna try our hand on a freaking, is it a gunship? Do you say gunship, bearded frog? Why do I do this? This is, this is borderline abuse. <laughs> Gosh, but I also need to know which track you want me to race on. Like, is there a specific- a bomber, just for clarity there. Is a bomber? Oh, uh, bo <laughs> yeah. gosh. In first person only, no inertial dampness. First person bomber, no, <laughs> what the world? Nobody wants to watch this content unless you hate me and want me to suffer. Oh my gosh. Okay. Let's just see. Oh, they don't have a bomber. I guess we uh, can't do it. Oh, it's a shame. All right, we'll just. <laughs> All right, let's see here. All right. All right. Do Prescott, I see. Oh. Kazaa, you're cruel. Okay. <laughs> And uh, when we start this, don't worry, we'll get into answering questions while I'm suffering. So that way there's still, you know, content to enjoy. <laughs> Here, let's just, let's just prepare. Oh gosh. <laughs> this is, this is ridiculous. Um, all right, so we need to, we're just gonna slow play this. Just take as long as we possibly can. I'll super light. That's ah, whatever. We're just gonna cheat. We'll get there. Let's get there. <laughs> Goodness gravy. We have, for anyone who's just walking in, I assure you we have covered some really cool, important things. I'm gonna run into Prescott. Ouch. 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 Um, just, you know. <clears throat> We have covered some important things. This particular moment you're joining, we're having just a little bit of fun, you know. Gosh. Wait, where's the race? Race, where did you go? I suppose we haven't fixed that marker yet. I think it's down here. Probably. We're close. There it is. There you are. This is gonna go so badly. Our goal is to get bronze. If we get bronze, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be a, a happy happy community ambassador. Oh my gosh. You have like the highest EHP, you'll be fine. What's EHP? What? Wait, I'm missing something. What's that mean? Like even my my ship is like floating. What is oh, what is happening here? Oh gosh. All right, here we go. <laughs> oh gosh, it's to the left. Ah! 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 <laughs> Fine finesse, finesse. All right, finesse. All right, we gotta get the, we gotta get the, Nope, we missed we missed that one. Is it okay if I miss some? We're gonna we gotta really we gotta we're pushing that bronze 
Where's the... Where's the next one? Oh, gosh, I'm missing them! No! Ah! <laughs> okay, okay. You gotta get the right motion. Ah, come on! How did that not go through? You know what ironically would probably help with this is if I had freaking eye tracking enabled. I need to set that up. Oh my gosh. This is... Ah! <laughs> no! The pain! Oh, we're gonna- we're gonna fail! No! No! Ah! We couldn't even complete the race. Oh, that's a- that, okay, alright. Well, we got- we gotta at least try to complete the race. Alright, so... There will be less grunting. Geekbyte, if you would be so kind as to read me off some more questions, we'll answer them while I'm trying to do this, I guess. <laughs> I don't know if this is going to work, but we'll try. <laughs> the concentration on your face is epic. Oh, thank you. Thank yeah. you. A <laughs> uh, question from Flory on Twitch. Uh, who made the design for the racing track star? And is that person an FC Bayern fan? Uh, oh, you know. that's, that's a particularly uh, special question that I want to give the proper... Do my wings hit the sides there? Uh, I want I want to give that like a really pure, authentic response. Um, I'd have to look up that information because I'm not 100% sure. If Torben was in the chat, he could probably <clears throat> hook me up. Oh my gosh. But yeah, I'm not sure. Oh, come on, we're we're doing it. Come on, we can get this. Um, but yeah, I, I can look that information up and hopefully res no! respond to you. We're gonna, we're gonna get it. We're gonna get bronze! Ugh! Time out! What? What? <laughs> what? I thought bronze was like a minute something. What? What? I felt really good about that. Oh, it's probably because of my last run. Wait, no. I, what happened? Close yet? So far. What? What? I. As awful as that probably looked, I was proud of that. <laughs> oh my gosh. All right, hang on a second. What? Yeah, it says bronze is a minute and five seconds. What the? I was, I was denied. Torben, fix it. <laughs> ah! Oh. Right now, you guys are just watching the stream of a broken man. <laughs> All right, next question. Next question is from Dashra over on Twitch. Uh, is the interior customization for cockpit view still in the pipes or has it been scrapped? Uh, I, I really appreciate this question because you're looking for clarity of the, the plan of attack, you know, our vision overall. Um, you know, the... The plan technically is still on the table. So it did change from guaranteed to happen to this space of it's a it's a great desire. But uh, like if anybody's wondering like what that might have looked like, we have vlogs over on YouTube. You can go back to the one that's like 100 plus player ships, I think is what it's called, uh, referring to the variety of, of combinations that your ships can be, as well as their passives and all that type of stuff. And one of the things that is covered is actually these bars in the cockpit like are different. And you know, of course, of course, we had conversations about what could change on this front too, right? Of course we did. And maybe you're even seeing some of the changes. I was not informed of any changes. Is that different? Is that... Did we start this process and nobody told me? Am I crazy? Does this look different? Anyway, uh, so regardless of that, like it's not a priority at all. Uh, this is gonna fall under the aesthetics package, right? And that refers to anything that has no effect on gameplay 
I'm sure somebody out there is going to be. Um, but Eric, uh, the the visualization of one's viewport is highly relevant to those who play in first person. I almost turned into Kermit the Frog there, but um, uh, no, we don't consider it gameplay changing. Um, and it's it's very much entirely aesthetic. And if we can enhance aesthetic choices and customization and all that type of stuff, we will after the very specific core foundational parts of the game are well established and taken care of. So, uh, yeah. I guess I'll do this race again. <laughs> but keep, uh, let's go with another question if you got it. You did a lot better when you were concentrating on the question. <laughs> oh yeah? Oh my gosh. Oh, that's good enough. Well, I appreciate that vote of confidence. So, uh, yeah, next question, please. Uh, this one came from Death Boost on Twitch. Um, he's asking, are you using a uh, keyboard and mouse? And yep. is your input layout the default or do you have a custom one? If, if you do, do you show it? Um, so I have, I, Mr. Ring, I have very, very slight adjustment to the default controls. Um, basically, I added some of the inputs that don't start default bound so like inertia dampening i have on my mouse um so uh i have a mouse that has a, a fourth and a fifth button so i can toggle it and it's incredibly invaluable honestly in combat like if you start uh tweaking your movements with inertia dampeners there's some super cool stuff that you can do obviously that's not been something i've been practicing but it is a it's a possibility oh gosh this is awful um wow terrible time but hey we completed it why are you saying time out unfortunate but um yeah it's definitely that's definitely in that territory of like um this is definitely in the territory of i want to use the default controls as much as possible for testing purposes um, I think that if I'm changing my control steam constantly, then it starts being a question of, hey, why don't we just have this control steam that I keep changing to as the default option, right? Um, and to that, I will also say that there's going to be some changes to the default control scheme. And that's as far as I can go on that. That is, oh my goodness, stop, full stop. That's all you're getting, okay? Um, but yeah, and also like what we did similarly with Everspace One, we will have different layout options for controllers for the various consoles that we come to. Um, console announcement will be this winter, right, Michael? <laughs> um, but yeah. Uh, also, I, speaking of Michael though, he does provide just a tad bit of clarity on the, the cockpit. Um, because with all sincerity, like the player data that we've been pulling in, he, he shows, he says, to manage expectations, since fewer than 20% of pilots fly in cockpit view, further cockpit customization is a very low priority. So, um, you know, if we're gonna add more to the game, we wanna make sure that the majority of those can enjoy it, right? Um, that's not to say we don't love you, you, you just like cockpit players out there, like it's awesome and we would like to do more, but it's just, you know, there's this process of importance, right? And we've got to get the core foundational gameplay done first, all of its systems, everything. Then from there, we've got to fine tune and tweak and ensure that everything's coming together in that complete package, including balancing, including storytelling, including like all of that stuff. And then after all of those things, there's probably still another check, like we have to ensure all of the lore is working correctly. And then, <laughs> and then we get to like the aesthetic fun stuff right um so please be patient with us on that front because we really would like to do a lot of cool stuff there but it's it's just not likely it's just not likely so just setting that expectation all right so do we have another question yes we've got i see few. more questions coming in too <laughs> gosh <laughs> um a uh, quick one from Finns over on YouTube. Uh, is it decided what color uh, the legendary tier items are going to be? Uh, and they did ask if they could show it to us, and I said oh, no. Uh, yeah, so I mean, <laughs> prototype, I think, already revealed that, honestly. Um, so in the prototype, you can uh, get a couple legendaries. 
And um, they show up as kind of like an orange color. And that's, as of right now, I mean, I'm just, it's like, it's not revealing anything because we can also change it on a whim. Um, yeah, right now they're orange, uh, just to kind of like have that sort of goldish-esque sort of approach. And, um, but yeah, like sincerely, that, that can change on a whim. It's like somebody be like, ah, I like purple. That's, actually, that won't happen because that's higher level stuff. But still, um, yeah. I don't necessarily think that matters, uh, uh, like because of how volatile the uh, development is around that. So I hope that you understand that it's not very, whatever you want to call it. It's, it's not like, we don't even care. Like it just needs to be able to stand out, right? It needs to be able to stand out. Much like how we wanted the uh, prototype in Starforge to have that additional standout uh, uh, gradation of your item, right? Um, like that's important to us. And, you know, with each of the tiers, whether it's green, blue, uh, magenta, whatever, like we want to ensure that just from the get-go, you can see this is what it is. So yeah, and that's what we'll do. All right. Uh, is it, is anyone writing down the times? I need somebody to, <laughs> need somebody to write down these times. <laughs> I think we've just seen the, the failed bit, and that's it. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's fine. All right. Uh, yeah, give me give me a couple more questions for sure. And cool. Yeah, we've got a couple more lined up, and then we're done. Uh, we'll, sorry, this is from Thunderflame over on YouTube. Uh, will we at some point have the possibility of exploring planet surfaces outside of normal locations? Uh, a good amount of the planets in the game are uh, nothing more than background elements. I love this question because it helps me provide an astounding amount of expectation here. No, we don't. We don't have any plans to explore uh, planets outside of the handcrafted locations that we are doing. And the reason, for, there's there's a number of reasons for this, honestly, but the big reason is because we don't want to handcraft an entire planet. Um, uh, I hope that's for obvious reasons. Um, but another reason is because like we want each space to be very intentional. And what can happen whenever you have a whole planet in a, a game, you know, in most cases, there are a lot of empty, boring parts that have to be created in tandem to all of the enjoyable bits that you're discovering. And our focal point in doing handcrafted locations is to ensure that we're creating powerful points of interest, um, we're creating unique uh, visuals, uh, and that we are uh, optimizing the location of secrets that can be a real nuisance to some of you, but offer a challenge to, um, you know, fully complete the exploration challenges in, in Everspace 2. So it's, you know, it's definitely not in the plans and I wanna make sure that your expectation understands why uh, we have no, no plans whatsoever to have a fully discoverable planets where you can fly in any angle, uh, all that stuff. Excellent. Right, last one, uh, so we can crack on. Uh, this one's from T-Cube. A uh, bit of a cheeky one, this one. Will we get sound packs? I'm still waiting for an Eric's sound, sound, sound pack for weapons. <laughs> Gosh, you guys are ridiculous. Um, if, if that were to happen, and I mean, I, I doubt it, guys. I'm gonna be, I love you all. You're a wonderful community and the stuff that happens in the stream is hilarious at times. I, I, I love that. I love this between us. It's very special. Um, it looks very different when you take a character, I'm gonna call myself a character, um, and interject that into a game space. Like as Michael had mentioned before, like the cockpits and being like the 20% case right here, um, that could backfire so hard. Like we put in all this work for my ridiculous voice. It's like, oh, you know, you're pulling up your gun. I'm just going dugga, 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 or, you know, whatever. And you know, there's going to be some of you who thinks it's hilarious. You're going to like, feel like there's an inside joke going on, but that's not worth our time and attention to do, to develop this game and reach all of the goals that we have in mind, as well as the aesthetic options that we'd really like to hit too. So, oh man, I missed, I'm gonna restart. Um, so yeah, that's a that's an incredibly far cry, just wanna make that clear. Also, Torben joined the chat. Torben, Torben, my lad, 
my dude. What are the cool kids saying? Is it still my dude? Whatever. Um, so, uh, I totally beat the bronze on this race and it's not capturing it for me. It's a bug and it makes me so sad because I'm doing this in a freaking bomber with inertia dampeners off because uh, the community is cruel and it didn't, it didn't save my time. I'm, I'm a sad person right now, but I'm trying so hard. Actually, this is, this is looking like, oh, I was looking like a clean run. Oh. No, I missed the, oh. anyway, just, just letting you know, um, I can submit a, a, a bug report too. Uh, so you don't have to like retain that right now, but just know that there seems to be a timeout issue. It's, it's not recording the time. It's just timing out when I finish the race. So, all right. Next question. <laughs> <laughs> we'll hit one more in before we dash off. Uh, All right. From Bearded Frog uh, on YouTube. Will the map showing where races are yes. show your best time or best completed tier? I that is know. something we would like to do. I am unsure if that will happen or not based on the time projection of, you know, everything we've already since put into racing. Like, we've, we've put a lot more into racing than we uh, were anticipating to. Like, I want to be incredibly clear there. But, you know, the the more clarity we can provide, the merrier. I feel like I'm kind of getting good at these turns. Uh, some some of these turns, we're just gonna. Oh, oh that was that was bad. Um, so, yeah, perfect world, perfect case scenario. Yes, we would love to do that. But um, I would not expect it. It would be cool though. All right. And that was the last question, right? It was yes. You can oh my that. gosh! I'm I'm free. I, I can stop <laughs> racing now, right? That's what that means. Oh my I, goodness! Well, no, I don't, I don't actually know about whether you can stop racing. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! All right, this might this might be my last time because I do want to get into some like other content stuff and and talk about one other important aspect of the game. Um, because like as I mentioned earlier in the stream, like what I want to do in this little next segment. It's gonna be a little out of my comfort zone um, and it might be a little weird, I don't know, but I wanna just pop open the Steam forums and just like show you guys how much we've been listening to you and just give you guys praise on the topics that are being had, um, like the ideas that you're generating, like it really does mean a lot to us. There's a lot of overlap of your ideas too, frankly speaking, like we we do have pretty freaking big plans for Everspace 2 and it's refreshing to see um, whenever you guys are very much aligned with our objectives. Like that feels really good. This race does not feel good. It says I timed out, see, see Torben? It says I timed out. So unfortunate, but it is what it is. All right, enough of this, enough of you, <laughs> goodness. Um, so now what I wanna do is I wanna dive in uh, and, and kind of do this steam thing. So what I'm gonna do we're still gonna be playing, um, but I just wanna like peruse this very briefly. We're just gonna peruse this very briefly and like what's being offered, uh, what's being said like surrounding the Steam forums. I'm not gonna show it on the screen. Uh, here, let me see if I can, uh, let's see. I wanna make this I wanna make this a little bit more attractive for you guys. Uh, let's see. What's an attractive location just to like stare off into, into the goodness that is. Oh my gosh, there's actually a lot of them. Um, here, we'll go, we'll go to Zarkov Border Patrol. It'll be nice chill. Whew! All right, let's, uh, let's just find a nice little spot just to sit and watch these beautiful storms. It's over here. Oh, this is nice. This is something that's kind of nice. Okay. All right, so we're going to just like you guys get oh, oh pfft, pfft. lost it. It's not it's not a perfect shot, but you know whatever. It happens. Okay. So, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of like peruse. Oh, you can see my mouse, but that's fine. Um, I'm just going to peruse Steam real quick and just kind of like show you guys like why you're awesome 
and how we're receiving this stuff, because this is this is important. This is an important part of development and how we're bringing it all together. Um, so yeah, I'm doing this completely on the fly. Hello stream, somebody posts. Goodness, you ridiculous people. Um, so for example, we've got uh, at the very bottom, I see uh, the light ships inadequate, right? We have individual uh, explaining the uh, light source at the front, right? Um, in some cases, it's like, you know, this this has actually been said a, a number of times. We've actually adjusted the light source because of recommendations on the forums. Um, you know, a really simple one. It's the light has never been something that's meant to be like super impactful, but also consider that this light that's in the ship is not meant to illuminate all of space in front of you, much like a, I don't know, say traditional flashlight. Um, so yeah. Uh, you know, we love that feedback and we've actually made adjustments pertaining to stuff like that, but it's not, um, it's not priority, right? Uh, we've got a focus on like the fans of the bomber that don't use mines. We've got like those healthy discussions surrounding like builds, um, gun energy versus reactor actually work. We see this stuff and we say, hmm, I wonder if we are conveying the mechanics of the game correctly, whether it's through the tutorial pop-ups, whether it's through um, the in-game explanations, like we don't want you to have to open up a wiki that says, this is how this works, right? Um, at the core, Everspace 2 is meant to very much be, you know, a pick up and play style of experience where you just like jump in, equip, uh, get a ship, get a weapon, shoot baddies. Like these are great questions that you're pointing out and you're asking, um, so you know. Um, the Linux support, you know, we got, the spheres blocking vision that goes back a long ways. That's good. We're gonna we're gonna see how much more we can do on that. But that also kind of goes into the twenty percent people uh, in first person. Um, a lot of you guys have been incredibly helpful on the forums too, and like helping people find titanium, for example, um, exiting missions. You know, ETA is in full release. A lot of these questions you guys know, and, and thank you so much for those uh, outlying spokesmen on these forums. You're awesome. I really do dig it. We really do dig it. Helps us uh, help you so much. And then we also have this big one, uh, and this is where we're gonna settle just a little bit of time on, uh, where we have this never liked level scaling. It's a lazy, pointless mechanic is what it says, right? Now, um, I'm not gonna like get into this uh, in, a, in a crazy degree or capacity, but I hope especially that those of you who have been on these streams know that level scaling is incredibly important for us. Like it is super important that we do it right. Obviously we could sit here and talk about how level scaling does suck in specific games. We can talk about like the dynamic scaling effect also really sucks in certain games. Like we could, we could be here for, you know, pages on a forum, for example. And, and that's generally what happens. But guys, I, I really do hope that you know, like we're watching these threads. We're seeing what you're saying. We're reading it all. Like we're digesting that because you're going on these forums and you're like, oh my gosh, this is such a terrible thing that the devs are doing and it's all broken and dumb and stupid. And this is why. Okay. Thank you for that feedback. That's good feedback. That's incredible feedback. This is important for our relationship to blossom. <laughs> not to say that uh, <laughs> we're done with level scaling, because we're certainly not. We're certainly not. Uh, there will be more adjustments, of course, through the balancing process. But, um, you know, it's really good to read through these threads and see the arguments of, you know, defending this style of, of scaling and, and that sort of style of whatever's happening. Um, because like, this is what we do internally too. Like at Rockfish, in some cases, like internally, we're just like a forum. Somebody's like, oh yeah, well, it's really important that we do this thing. Somebody else is like, oh, hell no. Why would you do that? That's absolute garbage. And this is why. Oh, well, you know, it was done properly in this capacity. Maybe you're thinking about that capacity or wasn't done well. And like, we, we, we do this. We tear things apart. We do not implement systems unless we know it's good for the game. And level scaling is here to stay. This is an important quality 
that brings everything together through the Everspace 2 experience pertaining to the itemization, pertaining to the challenge, pertaining to so much more. It's absurd. And it's not done yet. <laughs> it's not done yet. <laughs> so uh, that's about the most I'm going to talk on that. Um, but sincerely, thank you all for, for jumping in and having these style of discussions. Because these are good. These are healthy. These are important. And I want to really affirm you all on that front. I know some of you jump into the forums and you're like, oh my gosh, these forums are trash. Everyone's fighting. That's okay. So long as the focal point is on the topic at hand, we want you to fight. We want you to be passionate about a certain system or idea and like just have at it and provide those references too. Those are always very beneficial, right? Um, and I'm not gonna be your dad uh, on this front. You guys know that the second you're not talking about a topic and you're talking about a person, uh, you lost, you're done, sorry. It's no, it's no longer relevant, it's no longer important, and it kind of invalidates your ideas, so please don't be that person. Um, yeah, so sincerely though, thank you for being freaking just a, a sincerely, like a kick-ass audience surrounding the game. Uh, like you have, you, you out there, you have been awesome. Yeah. You have been so good, and the feedback is incredibly important in how it has cultivated, shaped, and changed how we look at things ourselves and have moved forward. Uh, it's nuts. It really is. It's really nuts. Uh, but we are definitely not happy with the level scaling system right now and there's more changes. <laughs> so <laughs> can't wait for all you all to see it, especially when it's in an in game state where you're going to be able to really see the difference from like that starting part of the game to the end game and how it all ties together. So more on that in the future. All right. Okay. <laughs> Somebody just wait. I'm looking at chat. Did I miss something? Is there a weird conversation going on? No, we're good. Okay. Y'all be nice to each other. Excellent. So yeah, but um, sincerely guys, like just a tremendous amount of praise for you all. You're vocalizing where you're at, how you feel. Feelings are so good when it comes to um, your experience. It's awesome. Keep it up. And don't stop being awesome on that front, especially. So now we're gonna jump over to community screenshots because I also want to have enough time for Michael Selects. Yeah! Mm, Michael, thank you so much for putting together a solid little fun time for us. So we are going to jump over to the wait page for a moment, and then we're going to pull up uh, those beautiful, delicious screenshots you guys have been taking. So let's go. We're back, look at that. Super efficient, great timing. Everything came together so well. Mm, beautiful. So we're gonna dive right in. We're gonna kind of move through this at a more uh, a faster pace because I wanna get to those Michael selects and read them off. Michael's done a great job for you all. I feel like at least. And uh, yeah, let's get in this. So High Barf took a bajillion shots uh, flying under the sea. And it was really cool to see the progression of where he was going and what he was finding. I'm a particular fan of this one. I don't even think it got that many upvotes on the Discord. I don't care. I liked it. I'm going to show this one. I have a bias and you can't do anything about it, but I dig it. I love how it's drawing your attention into the depths. Like you're continuing to move downward and it's so full of life and mystery. Like what's around this corner? Is that a cave? Like, is this like an alien creature sticking out? No, it's not. We would love to add alien creatures under the water, but uh, you know, um, like you've got this, you know, floral growth thing, you know, you've got, clearly there's some stuff going on and it's delightful, right? Um, and I love the way that he's captured this in his journeys uh, in this ice water. It's, it's so good. It's so delightful. Um, also, Geek Bite, um, this is gonna be kind of an interesting segment because we are gonna cover the community screenshots while also answering questions. Forgot to mention that, whoop. Um, so Geekbyte, go ahead and ask me a question as I transfer over the shot to the chemical bro. And it's a very metallic surface. <clears throat> cool, Geekbyte. I have a question um, from Adrian Caballero on YouTube. 
what systems are your favorites? And that's for you and me to answer. Ooh. Well, uh, I mean, straight out of the gate, like if you're looking at the diversity of uh, like what you're experiencing through uh, exploration in particular, I, I'm a big fan of the Kite Nebula because of the creatures. Like I love flying into the, the asteroids and then all of a sudden you've got this Athorian worm that just latches onto you and you're just like, <gasps> like, uh, it's it's so good, and I I love um, I just love how it all kind of comes together. It feels, for me, it feels the most unique because you have these special moments that can only happen there. Now that said, obviously, and we just saw it, like you can go underwater in Drake, and you've got this lava planet. This is just gorgeous. Like you have these very scenic parts of Drake. I particularly love Drake because of the battle systems that you're frequently getting through the job board. Uh, from a gameplay side of things, like I love just like throwing myself into those, just like combat. Mm, I love it. I love it. So yeah. What about you, Geek Bite? Uh, to be fair, I, I'm enjoying Drake. Uh, with me, such a new area, just investigate. But then, even some of the other areas, there's just those one place that you'll find that you know that's mysterious that you know it's a different to everything else and you just love spending time where you were with the lightning earlier oh love that place the atmosphere there is fantastic awesome yeah no i completely agree especially like when you're getting situations like what t3 cube had here where you're going up against the retaliators and uh <laughs> everything just kind of sucks <laughs> Uh, but uh, actually, I really enjoyed what you took, T3Cube. Uh, you had a slew of nice shots. Uh, we're going to see, I think, another one that you took a little bit later. Um, just capitalizing on that frosted ship look. It's fun. I think it's, I think it's, it's so neat to see. And the depth of field helps so much on this front, too. Um, we also have this shot from Kazaa being Kazaa. Uh, <laughs> why? Why would you do this? <laughs> Why did I show this during the stream? A better question, but hey, here it is. It's incredibly unique. Let's have another question. <laughs> uh, okay, we have a question from Seneca Athena on Twitch. Uh, now gameplay mode easy hard is the most effective on enemies. Is gameplay mode related to level scaling perhaps an option? Gameplay related to level scale? No, it's not going to be an option. Um, I th I've seen that question on the forums as well, and it's not something that we can really uh, answer because there's not. Um... I'm I'm trying to think of a game that like allows you to turn level scaling off, and I honestly can't think of one. If you guys know, I would love to hear it, but that process sounds like nightmare fuel to me, especially in how we've established very key points in the game that the player needs to be at, as well as having an underlying static leveling system in the game. Like each system has a different internal level bound to it. So when you're leveling up, it's not that all enemies are just scaling to you. No, that would be dumb. Um, it's that they are looking at where you're at and according to the location you're in. So it's a two factor system. Um, if we were to deny that the level scaling on that front, I mean, that we'd basically be balancing two different games. We'd have to balance the game with the level scaling on, we have to balance the game with the level scaling off, and that, that no, I, that's not gonna happen. That's not gonna happen. So, um, I, it's, it's a good question, and I, and I hope that you understand. That is a good question. I'm not just trying to shoot you down. It's important to have this expectation of it's not in the plans and it's, it's, it's simply not gonna happen, because that's, it's a really big ask to have a toggle for level scaling. It just, mm -mm. it just doesn't work like that, unfortunately. So um, we got another shot from Hybarf here. Uh, again, he did a lot of exploration under the water and this one was liked by several of you. I think there's a nice bit of clarity that he provides in this shot, uh, getting the side of his Prescott Starbase Striker. I think it's really great. We got the sun, we got this depth of field going on. You see the ice on the surface of the water. Really, really neat. So it comes together well. We got Flory with some bases over in Drake. And man, you know, he sent this shot and I just kind of was like, wait, did we really, did we really do that? We added lava plumes to like the bases over in Drake. And I did some comparison work. I really enjoy the bases out of Drake, honestly. So thank you for the shot and reminding me how much detail work we went back in and changed things up for more uniqueness between the systems. Uh, just a really pleasant shot, honestly. Uh, very, very good. We're going to cycle over to uh, Dark Chaos, flying into this Coalition Terminal as Geekbike asks us another question. 
Here we go. Uh, Shed of Nels uh, over on YouTube asks, uh, I've just watched the February stream, uh, the VOD, uh, and it talked about being able to craft named weapons soon trademark. But I haven't <laughs> seen anything about it since. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's definitely going to be in the would be nice to have aesthetic side of development. So uh, I'm really glad you brought that up though. That's because that's great. That's a lot of fun. And uh, it's not really something we've talked about internally for a while because it's just, it's not come up. Um, but you know, if we can make things a little bit more personalized and, and, you know, really give you a sense of ownership, like we're absolutely gonna go those routes if we've got the time and the space to do so. Um, so that's not entirely off the table, but it's also absolutely not a priority, and I can't guarantee that that will make it into the game, okay? So, uh, but still, a solid question, I love it. So, good stuff. Um, so, this shot, um, I just, I really like the way that this bends into the station, like, it's, it just, it just, it speaks to me. Like, it's the, the motion of the ship and the scale that it provides of this location, you're seeing everything in the front. You're seeing, you know, I, just, I dig it. I dig it so much. I love these style of shots, so keep it up. Um, that was from Dark Chaos. T3 Cube, another shot. I just like the juxtaposition of this because it's just like everything sucks and everyone's dead. Um, you got that station crashed into the water. You got your ship that's frozen is just sinking. I'm just pretending like you, all systems are down. It's like, peace. No, you're not coming back from that. Oh my gosh. Um, I, I love it. I, this, it's, it's almost like thematic, uh, what you've done with this one. So cool stuff. Very, very cool. And I didn't mean for that to be a pun, but I guess it happened. Oh my gosh. We got, uh, this, look at those colors. Oh, from dark chaos. Let's look at this as we answer another question. Okay. We have one actually from T3Cube, uh, over on Twitch. Uh, will we be seeing any ship build showcases? Oh yeah, so we've we've been cataloging a couple. Um, we haven't received a lot, um, and I do have that in my back pocket if there's like a kind of like a slower stream where there's not hardly anything to talk about and we can spend more time to, you know, highlight the stuff that you guys have been doing. So definitely know that we've got those, like we've been cataloging those. And another benefit for us asking you guys what those builds look like is it kind of gives us some insight into what the desired build routes do look like. So uh, believe it or not, it's providing a little bit of feedback for future balancing and tweaking and uh, making synergies and alternate sort of, uh, whatever you want to call them, more interesting, like the ways that you can kit out your ship or your items, you know. Um, so sincerely, thank you for providing those. Uh, we'll definitely see more in the future. Just, uh, just hasn't been on the docket at the moment. So yeah, good question. But yeah, with Dark Chaos here, um, you know, a lot of the shots that we get highlight that incredibly uh, prominent blue orange, right? You see that commonly. And if it's not blue orange, then it's probably like, um, it's either like a dusty gray with some sort of like explosion, or it's like, um, you know, you, the, the color variety that tends to be the shots that you guys take uh, are, gosh, I don't want to say same-ish because that sounds like I'm like, slapping y'all down it's like get good at photography no that's not what i'm saying but it's really nice when you have these outliers like what dark chaos provides here where you're seeing you know these greens and these reds which are still very much complementing each other um and you still have this detail work that's shining through like you're getting all these bits of the asteroid the light source from these little working drones um and you just get this expansive shot of the space you're flying through um, you know, Alcyone Station is vast and colorful and seeing it from all these different angles and sides, sometimes it can produce some really cool and interesting results. So I really enjoy this one, Dark Chaos. Well done. Very good stuff. Um, and then Geek Bite, I also wanted to just pull this one just for kicks and giggles. This, hey. shot, this shot is from the prototype. It's from the prototype. That is like, man, what a trip down memory lane. I, I forget how much emphasis we put into the photo mode, even from the very beginning. And, uh, you know, it's just, it's pleasant to see that all come together and uh, create some really neat work to boot. Oh, whoops, that wasn't supposed to happen. But uh, there we go. Oh, I need, to, I, need to do, I need to do one other thing. Hang on a second, I gotta pull up a thing. Hang on. Um, go ahead and ask me another, qu actually, hang on. Hang on, one second. 
<laughs> I'm getting way too excited about all of this stuff because you guys are amazing. Um, I have to have my notes in order to read what Michael's uh, profound thoughts and words were on your delightful submissions. It's so good. <clears throat> Here we are. Oh my gosh, I got it. We have achieved victory. And we're back, I think. Yes, okay. Awesome. So, um, let's cover the Michael Selects. These are hand chosen from Michael, the CEO of Rockfish Games. And he puts a lot of time and attention into these selections based on so many factors, it's kind of ridiculous. There's a power about the photos he takes from you guys in the sense of providing that storytelling approach to draw people in. Um, in a lot of cases, these shots that he goes through are borderline marketing material in order to uh, you know, entice others to the Everspace 2 experience. Like these are, these are solid shots. So if you see yourself highlighted here, just give yourself a pat on the back and uh, cause it's, it's solid, solid work. So the very first one, out of the gate, we've got Bradley Rings of Power. Very clever shot and well composed. You must have an exceptional eye when exploring Everspace 2 to see opportunities as we see in this shot and then go back to stage everything to perfection. Again, well done. And uh, yeah, it's, it's clear that Bradley has been cruising through his shots and anytime he sees an opportunity, he makes a lot of key adjustments and alignments to bring something like this together. Very cool. Solid work, Bradley. Next up, we've got Kazaa. This one might look a little familiar. Uh, this is called Kazaa Private Platform. At first, I wasn't sure about this shot, but somehow it stuck with me. Definitely love the colors and the gamey look of it. There's also an element of abstraction making it look unreal, no pun intended. However, there's also something off. It's the lacking drop shadow from the Sentinel. Yeah, what's, the, what's, what's up with that? What is this space magic going on here? Where's the, what's going on here? But uh, you know, it's, Otherwise, it is very well composed. It's bringing everything together and uh, it, it does kind of stick with you, as Michael says. So so nice shot, Kazaa, really bringing things together. Cool, cool stuff. The next one we have is from The Chemical Bro. Man, I'm making good time. Look at me. Oh my gosh, this is so good. Goodness, we might even be able to get a little bit more gameplay in after this. I don't even know. Awesome. So this shot comes from the Chemical Bro, Solar Power. Love this shot. Nothing screams space like flaring solar panels of a massive space station floating in orbit high above a humongous planet and a spaceship departing with thrusters fully throttled. Has been added to our Steam Store page for a reason. I'm, I'm looking for the button right now. Where's the button? There it is. Add it, add it to the Steam Store page. That's always a major compliment. You can go right now to Everspace 2 Steam Store and you see this shot. We love highlighting those and uh, great work. Fantastic, the chemical bro. All right, we have another returning shot. What? Oh my. Bradley once again into the sunset and the Kait Nebula, which I think is actually incredibly beautiful. This one gives me Top Gun and space feelings. <laughs> Take my breath away. <laughs> with, with the blurred wear of a space spider and one of its wings occluding the sun. Oh yeah, it's very much so it does actually. Uh, man. <laughs> That's, that's beautiful. All right, notice that the engines are barely on, giving a cruising into the sunset vibe. Would be a great scene at the end of a campaign when credits roll. Yeah, oh, that, that's a really good point. I think that comes together really well. Uh, so Bradley, yeah, I mean, I've said so many times for Bradley's shots, like solid use of depth of field and, you know, uh, continues to push that forward in all of his shots. 
So keep it up. Fantastic. Two shots of yours chosen by Michael. Wow. Incredible. All right, we've got another one. Actually, hang on a second. I'm going to adjust my screen so I can make sure I'm not missing any of your beautiful chats. There we go. This next one comes from Crispy Muffin. Hey, wonderful. Coming in hot. We did have a similar shot before, but I picked this one too because it is so super crisp. B Muffin. <clears throat> and clean while the outlaw on fire disrupts the scene. It is a stark contrast to how calm the setting is otherwise, as there's no indication of combat. So great visual storytelling in this shot. I say storytelling so much when it comes to these shots, and it it echoes through and through. Like if you are painting a narrative in these shots that you're bringing together, like it. That's, that's a huge sell in and of itself. And I do think that this speaks incredibly loudly on that front. So very good shot, Crispy Muffin. Really enjoy it. <laughs> Sorry, Geek Bite, by the way. All right, anyway. So uh, next one, we have another Crispy Muffin. What? Double? Double the Crispy Muffin. All right. This is called Ship Graveyard exploration. So as I had mentioned previously, sometimes the shots in the discord can get a little bit samey, you know, it's, it comes and goes. And sometimes you get like these like gray tones, which can feel bland, but here it's not the case because there's some really fantastic contrasts in between like the, uh, the light that is shown across the scene. So this is what Michael had to say. Uh, you really have to look for the Sentinel in this one. But that's making this shot so special. It's a poster child for the DMZ, being a former battlefield in space with lots of precious things to loot between nooks and crannies of former space dreadnoughts now floating in a gigantic spaceship graveyard in zero G. Wonderful, wonderful word. I love this so much. This, this just, this really does scream as this is the DMZ. So wow. Fantastic coverage. Next, Kazaa, again. Drone carrier GTFO. This could be taken right from a sci-fi blockbuster movie when space hell breaks loose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The immediate action is perfectly captured with mayhem on the drone carrier while the engine close up adds fantastic depth of field in this superb shot. Another addition to our Steam store page. Boom! Awesome. Very cinematic and a uh, fantastic choice. Uh, keep up the great work, Kazaa. I dig it. So good, so good. Um, and for those wondering, like, if I'm going to answer any more questions, yes, I am absolutely answering more questions. I'm going to do so when we're done with the Michael Selects. we got a couple more to go, and then we're going to have a really pleasant time just, like, chatting and answering questions because I actually timed things out accordingly today. Mm, just going to pat myself on the back for that one. <laughs> Excellent. The Chemical Bro. Oh, once again, I think I highlighted this last week as one of my favorites from the Discord, um, I think. Question mark. I always love the VFX when mines go off. And this is one, this one is perfectly captured. You can almost feel the pilot's butt getting burned from the plasma wave. Ouch. Yeah, no, I, I think that there's a, there's a great amount of quality that can come out of the uh, visualizations of certain, you know, events, effects, equipment, you know, what have you and being able to highlight them in ways that uh, generates even more detail in an image is phenomenal. Like you zoom in on this ship and you can see the reflections, you can see the, the colors that are, whoops, that are like popping even further. Like it's, it's adding more depth because of the care that was taken in this shot, right? And uh, really great work like even like the subtle green you see that sheen going on like because of the color of the ship based on the colors of these effects going on, like every it just comes together just chef's kiss solid very good stuff the chemical bro very very good stuff 
We got Bradley for a third time. Oh my gosh. Three Bla Bradley shots here. That is nuts. Unheard of even. Grady and Brunt refinery. A nice throwback shot to the clean sci-fi look of iconic movies and TV series of the 70s. Yeah. Man-made structures were mostly gray with regular patterns scattered on the building surfaces and some rare color bands, often in orange as the only warm color in the scene while illuminated with harsh, high contrast lighting, so typical for the cold, empty space. Also note the spaceship as a reference for scale and it's neat drop shadow on the building to add depth. Very much so. The positioning of that uh, moon, planet, planetoid, celestial object is just, it's very well captured. Um, just something I wanna point out, which goes such a long way when it comes to framing a shot. Notice how this does not go all the way across this edge, right? And same with the right side of the planet too right? It's not going all the way across. Like it's meant to be part of the scene. Whereas you have this almost like bordering technique of this massive station that is just miniaturized by this planet or celestial object, uh, which then even shows its scale in accordance with the, you know, like, it's, I mean, it's everything what Michael said. I'm just pointing out like how delightful this all comes together that gives a sense of the void and yet also the wonder of what's out there in this highly explorative space, right? Very, very nice. Space 1999 vibe. I, th I think it goes back further than that, honestly, but um, yeah, like, like I'm even, shoot, I'm getting like alien vibes from this, you know, where you have like that sort of, what would you call it, retro sci-fi? Like, it's just, yeah, there's some really, really good qualities to this shot. All right, so we got one last shot to look at, and we got another one from Dark Chaos. A lot of individuals here getting seen two, three times from these Michael Selects. This could be you, by the way. This could, that's right. Yeah, well, maybe not you. You got some work, but you. <laughs> oh my gosh. Sincerely, like, if you love taking these screenshots, if you're taking a lot of great care in this, send them our way. We love to show them. We love to talk about them. Um, and it doesn't matter if you're really good at it or if you really suck at it. Honestly, like we love it when you just share screenshots. You might have a gold nugget in there. You never know. It's really awesome. So Dark Chaos, this is initiating warp drive. Oh my gosh. Oh, so good. This one is greatly timed while also perfectly aligned so that the front shield overlaps with the warp VFX nicely. I also like to, uh, I also like how the warp VFX illuminates the ship's hull, revealing the incredible details featured on the outlaw bomber. It's true. Sometimes you don't see all of these little details and what light sources can do, but when you capture a scene in the right way where there's a strong point of light uh, covering some solid ground like this, it can, that illumination is, I mean, gosh, just a big shout out to everyone who's helped with the detail work on these ships. This is not a small feat. Yeah, you might only see them for five seconds before you blast them out of the sky because you're awesome, but they look cool. <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> Very great shot. Love how it all comes together. Incredible. That frontal shield is such an aesthetic strong point. Yeah, it really is. Brings it home. Guys, that's all 10 of the Michael Selects. Um, even though it didn't make it make the cut for our Steam store page, this is the hero shot of today's Michael Selects. Keep it coming, pilots. So there you go. Yeah, outstanding work. Love it. Everyone, seriously, big round of applause to all of these individuals. Uh, Michael, thank you again. Um, even though as our CEO and having way too much on your plate right now, like it is so appreciative that you do take this time to commend this incredible work that our community does. So, so sincerely, thank you, Michael. And thank you everybody for submitting these screenshots because it just, it sincerely brings Rockfish joy when we see your love coming through 
what you're sharing. It's, oh, it's, it's fantastic. It's, there's, there's so much like energy that is being created here. You guys are freaking awesome. It's so good. All right, so with that being the last shot, that means we have a little bit of time to answer more questions. Let's extend this. Let's let's get on this. So we're gonna take the time here where, um, I think we're just gonna keep it on some of these scenes. Like, I, I don't think I'm gonna get into more gameplay, but uh, Geek Bite, I know you got more questions. Let's go ahead and get through a couple more of these and see if we can uh, clarify more details and all that stuff. So let's go, questions. Uh, one from Cyril underscore FR from Twitch, uh, from Mont Francais. Uh, can you explain if the storyline is important to the game? This is a particular question. And there are a number of ways to answer this. Um, so let me say this. One of the things that is important whenever you're creating a game is what the focal point, that main topic that everything else is going to uh, bend around, right? Like you have to have this foundation first and then you build atop that, right? Pretty basic in understanding like in, in most things that you're creating. Video game's no different. As a video game, the gameplay is integral. You could write the best story of all time, but if your gameplay sucks, that story kind of doesn't matter because it's, it's supposed to be a game, right? So there has to be a profound gameplay experience that comes out absolutely. Like that has to, that's, that's ground zero, is the gameplay experience has to give, it has to deliver. It has to deliver. From there, now we can say, hey, how we're bringing these together, this fun experience that we're having, we want to incorporate more fun through different mediums because storytelling is in fact a different medium than video games. That's not to say video games can't have killer stories because they absolutely do, but it's good to recognize that they don't go hand in hand, right? They are different. So that's why I love this question. For Everspace 2, we very much have a focus on the story that we want to tell. Uva and Michael have both been incredibly passionate about how this character, Adam, is developing as a clone and what he's realizing, how it all comes together uh, through these wild experiences and being able to do that through gameplay that is very much important for us to bring you back in for another combat sequence. It's, uh, in a way, it kind of uh, plays off of each other. But um, at the end of the day, if if I were, you know, saying the specifics of it, I would personally say gameplay first here. Um, there might be some differing opinions on the team, uh, but that's how it, that's like how it falls. We are still incredibly thrilled. And I, I'm telling you, like, I really enjoy how our story comes together, especially with the context of Everspace One, and especially with the context of the world building we have surrounding this whole experience with a pretty grand focal point on looter shooter. So uh, yeah, hopefully that was detailed enough. And Michael, if you want to, if you want to chime in on that and be like, no, Eric, why are you saying grand point? You know, have it, have at it, because I know that this is really your baby. You've done a lot with the story. You've worked with Uva about it. Um, a little added context on that could be really cool. So if you want, Michael, um, but also no pressure because we're moving to the next question. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, this one's a Caustic Swarm over on YouTube. Uh, pretty specific for you, Eric. What is okay. your favorite part of the game? Mechanic, area, ship, whatever. Gosh, I just love the rush. I love the challenge. Um, when I am playing games, for me, I want an emergent gameplay experience that challenges me in the moment. And Everspace 2 uh, is definitely getting there. We still have a little bit more work to go on that front. I'm not gonna deny that. And Endgame's gonna be the core of that, right? But um, I very much love it when those challenges are just thrown at you and it says, this is impossible, figure it out. I, I live on that. That's the type of a gamer that I am. So um, yeah, it's it's really the it's really the challenge that, that comes together as a whole for me. It's it's 
you'll see a lot more of that too. You'll see like my crazy amount of energy when we get into the end game state. We're able to talk more about ancient rifts and show some of the legendaries and, you know, crack open like even more mutators for high risk areas. Um, I think those are somewhat priority. Hans Christian, are you there? Did we reprioritize that? I can't remember. Uh, like, like that variety of uh, mixing up those formulas in the background where you're not 100% sure what's around the corner and you're not sure like how you're gonna have to make things work, but you gotta try. Like I, I live on that. I live on that. So I love that question. So cool. Oh. Excellent. Uh, Wizard Jerry up next from YouTube. Uh, will it be possible to customize ship wings name in 1.0 release? This was something that we wanted to do, actually. So uh, full transparency on that. Like, it would be so amazing if you could name your ship, right? That would be super freaking cool. That would be amazing. Um, here's hoping. It's not technically in the plans, but uh, it would be awesome. So it's one of those things that falls in the aesthetic customization, like not priority. I'm sure you understand that, but still, just point that out. That'd be cool. NS, NS. Uh, Finn's ass from YouTube. Uh, is all update going to add any new ship customization option? I know that hasn't been the focal point, right? As we've mentioned. Um, but I know that Matthias has still been tweaking and refining certain elements of wings. Like you've even seen it, like the, the difference between the Vindicator wings, even on like the hero shot that we had for the summer update versus the wings in game, they're actually different. So like there's still continual refinement on that front. And you know, I know that he's still working on more wings because I've told you guys that like, it's not likely we'll have all the wings done by 1.0 because there's a lot more to do. There's a lot of work on that front, but um, it's definitely possible. But yeah, again, it's just, it's just not a focal point. It's just not a focal point, that's all. So here's hoping. That's another one of those here's hoping. All right. Uh, Shed of uh, Nails on YouTube. Uh, named weapon catalyst, question mark. Uh, to minimize resources required to implement named weapon crafting and make sure it can be squeezed into the game. I did ask for some clarity on this one and they meant catalyst as a means to craft named weapons, e.g. Yeah. an equalizer catalyst turns in any coil gun into an equalizer. Oh, okay. So you're basically, um, you're assigning it the manufacturer is what you're doing. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, I suppose that's a possibility. Um, I know that we still have plans on more catalysts too. Um, and there's also a couple more plans in <clears throat> item modification. Um, <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, naming, or not naming, uh, changing uh, an item into a completely different item. And I do say that very profoundly here, like a pulse laser is not a synchro pulse. It's of the same type, but they're not the same, right? Um, if you're able to like change a weapon into another weapon, um, I think that's getting outside of the realm of what we are looking as capabilities within the crafting system. So I doubt it, um, but yeah, it's uh, it's an interesting idea. I'll definitely give you that, so. Um, yeah, one last comment just as we wrap up oh um, good yeah created frog uh thank you Eric, for doing the race challenge today it was a valiant effort we really enjoyed it and it led to being a uh, to a book discovery we love you <laughs> yes yay yay finding bugs I, I never would have found that without attempting it so um i guess that's true well i'm glad that you did enjoy that um it was it was more fun than i thought it was going to be i will admit um because again, you know, even I said earlier, I really like the the challenge that's set before me, and that was a challenge. <laughs> Woo! Um, and uh, yeah, it's it's good. It's good. It was fun. So, uh, you know what else is fun? All of you guys. Oh my goodness! It's been such a delight today, being able to highlight some of these changes, like the Sentinel uh, and the racing. Which, oh my gosh, I'm really happy with how that's come along. Um, guys, it's also really nice to be able to have these open discussions about like how early access operates, like where we're at, 
what those plans are in the future, just to cultivate that proper expectation so that you are along for the ride. So you're not getting hit with anything that's weird or random. Um, you're, you know what you're getting when you come to Everspace 2, right? Um, and if you don't, if you're still like messed up about this, you're like, I still don't get it. I don't, I don't understand why blah, blah, blah is happening. Ask us, either come to the streams, go to our Discord. We've got an Ask RFC, RFG channel there. Post on the forums, be like, I don't get this. Like, let us know. Community's gonna jump all over it. We're gonna jump all over it. Like, we are incredibly transparent. It's even in the marquee down below. Like, we want to communicate this process so you know what's happening. If we were a shady company, then that would be completely, we wouldn't, we wouldn't do that. <laughs> so uh, let us have a conversation with you. Just reach out to us and it's it'll be such a delight. Um, aside from that, um, also uh, thanks for letting me do that little rant on level scaling. If you missed that, I'm sure it's gonna be in the vlog. You can backtrack to it. Um, just really important and valuable feedback that you guys have sent us. Like you guys have seriously been awesome. And I have seriously been Eric Schrader, your community ambassador. Oh my gosh, thanks again, uh, Geek Bite, for uh, dropping in and reading off those questions. Just, I love You're the welcome. way that these streams, the streams are working so well with you doing that, so thank you. Um, and thank you, everyone, sincerely, for all these beautiful questions. Don't stop being awesome, and we'll catch you next week. Hopefully we'll have more stuff to show. Uh, if not, don't worry, it's gonna be fun anyway, I promise you. So, all right, toodles! I love you all. You're so wonderful. <laughs> oh my goodness. You know, I was trying to practice this thing where you like sing and you beatbox at the same time. I'm going to try it right now. It's going to like completely. <clears throat> I don't know how to take breaths. Also, um, so you guys know that song in Everspace One? You, uh, the, it's something like dog fighting. It's not like dogs in space. Let me try and do that one. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, I'm done. <laughs> I just wanted to try something different. It was it was fresh. I I watched a YouTube video and that makes it fun. Oh my gosh. I love that track that was freaking fire. Giro, bring it back, please. All right, guys, I'm out. Let's go give some love to Corbin. I believe he's streaming Stellarius. It'll be great. Also, um, uh, please note that you should wish to list us too because there's lots of information that drops on Steam like freaking all the time. And when you wish list us, you also see the sales, you see what's going on. All that stuff is incredibly beautiful. This is a really important point that I forgot to mention last week. Sorry, Michael. Like sincerely, that goes such a long way for you and it helps build exposure for us so that more people know what we're doing, what we're creating. 
oh my gosh, get your friends in here. Let's bring it on. Let's bandwagon the crap out of this. Oh, oh, it's good stuff. Oh, it's wonderful. It's fantastic. Oh, my throat. 